whether your footage is too old or it's too noisy or it's too out of focus or it's too far away. G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and recently DigiRT Software have reached out to me and asked me if I can review their AI RT software. It's where they upscale video, take away noise, increase color and a whole host of other things using AI through a program. And I will leave you to draw your own conclusions from the examples I put in and you'll get to see exactly how it can be helpful in your scenarios and the things that you face. So let's just jump in. This is the opening interface that we get when we load it up. We hit here to select the files that we want. Which brings us to opening this file. We have a slider here that shows you where the effect of the AI has. So the effect of the AI is on the right and the previous footage you had is on the left. And you can sort of see that shift and change as we go through. It is here and you can import other videos if you so choose. And when you want to get rid of a video, you click that cross there. As I've gone through, that's 4K. And then it drops down to 1080p here. And then it drops down to 720 here. This little boy riding his bike, he is unidentifiable. Well, he's riding his bike and so I thought this would be great to see how the quality of the AI works on this video. There it is on the 720 and that's what it looks like with your AI or at least what you think it might look like. Now we're going to do a few things to this to make sure it's prepared and ready to go. First of all we're going to look at the AI mode and there's three AI modes you can choose from. There's mode detail which is about sharpening details and textures with clarity. It's ideal for daylight footage, nature and portraits just like we have here. Then there's smooth HQ which is just more of a gentle enhancement with color and texture fidelity. It's best for indoor scenes or interviews or just a general cleanup of your footage. And then there's super video, which is like a deep noise and blur removal for low light. And I'll show you that in a minute with a different clip. Today, we're going to use Mo Detail. Now, depending on which AI model you choose, you get these selections made available. So what we are focusing on is this 720 image that we want to increase by four to bring it up to 4K standards so we can compare it to its 4K counterpart and see if it does the job of upscaling with accuracy and without too much sharpening or blurring of the contrast lines. Let's multiply it by four and we can go turbo, which means it happens quicker because this process of doing Doing this will take about 10 minutes on this short 11 second clip. So you need to realize when you're applying an AI model to footage that you already have, it will be quite demanding on your computer. This is an M2 chip on an Apple Mac and it still takes quite a bit of time. So you may want to factor that in as you look at your workflow that it's not just a thank you one and done and we're on to the next. It's actually quite a process. So we're not going to select turbo. We're just going to give give it a little bit of time, but give us the best results it can. And I'm not going to select any of these other things. Then I simply go export current and it goes to here and starts doing its thing. It tells us in the bottom left hand corner with this green line, its progress. And once it gets up to here, it will say open and we can click on open. And this is what you will see. Now what you're looking at here is on the left hand side is our original footage. On the right hand side is our AI enhanced footage. Watch this as it plays through. What we're going to do is play it all the way through and see if you can notice a difference between the two. If you look at that, you can really see a massive difference. We've programmed it to bring it up to 4K. It's never going to get to 4K. But look at the detail here versus the muddiness and the noisiness here. So it really does make a big difference. And you can see like some of the definition. This is what AI does. It just takes away some of the definition to make it really um, upscaled. And you lose some of the sharpness and then it sharpens it. So you get something like this but we're looking to see if this tool will be helpful for you. So what do you reckon? Is it helpful for you? When you're loading up another video, I like to go clear all, go confirm, and then I close this down, go remove, and then I can add my next video. This was taken at 400 frames a second, which is insanely slow motion. It means I can slow it down to 6%. But the 
trade-off is that it's shot at 720p and it's in low light. So it's awful conditions and perfect to really give this program a run for its money. So what we're going to do is select up here Super Video. That's going to kick that in as it generates a preview and we can see the preview. Look at the trees, for example. So that's trees. So you can see the sharpening and the detail. Look at the bar and the net. So we might be onto something here. We're going to upscale that by two. We can only upscale it by two. So we're going to bring it from a 720 to a 1080p. But then you can go back and do it again and again and again. But realize it probably loses some of its quality the more you do it. Because the more it sharpens something, the more detail it compromises and it just... Yeah, there's a limit to these things. The reason you only have upscale of two is because it's dealing with low light and a lot of noise. So we're just going to go all the way down and go export current. And that's going to kick that in. And we're going to be here for a little while. So let's just jump to the results. On the left hand side, you'll see the original GoPro footage shot at 720. And here is the upscale by four super video on the AI. Look at his face. Look at the trees. Look at the bar. And I would say there's not a great deal of difference there. There is a little bit in the net you can see and in the trees. I don't know, what do you think down below? Let me know. Now I've just opened up a shot that we're going to look at the slow motion. <laughs> shot at 4k 60 and at 4k 60 I can slow it down to about 40% but what I want to do is I want to slow it down to 120 frames not just 60 frames which allows me to show it at 20% and that's what we're going to do here we do that by going all the way to the bottom and this frame interpolation means it builds in frames between your frames which means you can show it in slower motion if I go here and I can click slow motion straight away and it gives me a half slow motion or a quarter slow motion um, I could choose a half or a quarter but what I'm going to do is take slow motion off and I'm looking at 120 frames and we're good to go so let's export current now let's also try the slow motion at half its speed which will give us 120 frames equivalent and it's happening before our very eyes original footage uh, quite straightforward now 60 frames which enables us to slow it down to 40% and then what we've done is taken it through the AI, we've reduced it down to 120 frames a second, and this is what we get. <laughs> mm, yeah. All right, let's choose the buy two option now. Uh, it seems much more realistic. Now let me put them all next to each other at the same speed. Now what about noise? Listen to this video. So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both on HDR, 4K, 60. Do you hear the surf in the background? That's the noise we want to get rid of. And we've got two options with this that we're going to experiment on. So I'm going to go all the way up here. I'm going to take the mode detail to here and I'm going to mode multiple by one. We don't want that to be mucking about on us. Then I'm going to go down to audio denoise. And at audio denoise, I have these three filters. The voice filter 3.0 is best for outdoor interviews, vlog footages with wind or chatter. For example, what we have now, the 3.1 is a slight improvement on that. So we're going to use the version 3.1 because I feel it's always best to use the best version available. And if you choose RN noise CPU, that's just a way to get rid of things like a gentle hum in the background. You know, sometimes you just you're recording and there's just a gentle hum. It's how you get rid of that. But if you want the full force, we're going to go voice filter 3.1 and then we'll compare it with the RNN noise against the original footage. So let me extract this for you to save us some time. And if I add task and I can actually go here and I can add a separate task. If I go add task and I can do both of these at the same time. And that way I can set up a project to process as it needs to through the AI and then I can come back later on. This is the sound test and just have it. This is the original audio, so you get a feel for it. So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both on HDR, 4K, 60. Then we're going to put the RN module on, which is a gentle noise reduction. 
So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both up HDR, 4K, 60. And then let's put the big guns on. This is the voice filter 3.1. So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both up HDR, 4K, 60. Isn't that amazing? Now let me chop from one to the other between that last one, the voice filter and the original audio. So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both up HDR, 4K, 60. So I want to see what the quality is like. It's both up HDR, 4K, 60. Well, that's pretty solid, isn't it? Now, I just want to show you a couple more things on this video, and that is you can change the color. So you can change its warmth or its coolness. You can change its tint to pink or to green, and I can actually make it just a sunnier day. You see the difference that can make? And then I can change the exposure. So if I want to change the exposure, change the contrast, saturation, you see, I have all these controls, and so I can actually make the footage quite easily look how I want it to look in order to get the results that I'm after. If you have settings that you're like, I need to redo that, just press this little arrow here, and it brings it all back to zero, and you're good to go again. And then the other option I want to talk to you about is edit. So edit, I have the chance to flip to or to go up. You can do all sorts of things with these. They're quite easy or you can adjust the crop and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to adjust the crop and then we're going to go crop ratio 16 to 9 which is the same crop as this and then I'm going to bring it down and what I want to do is I want to crop exactly the same as my 720. So I'm going to crop and then I'm going to blow this up by four and we're going to compare this crop here to the previous 720 panel that was this size and fitted right in there. And you'll notice that if it's in super video and I go here, I can't choose any of these. But if I go back to Mo detail and then I select by four and then I go to super video, we're all good. I'm not going to go turbo still. My crop is in place. I'm going to export current. And away we go. You want to see the results? The cropped 720p scaled up to 4K versus the zoomed in 720p quality upscaled to 4K quality. And as you can see, if I pause it right in the middle, there's no issue at all. They're both the same. So you use the crop to crop in on a particular part of your image that you want to crop in. But if you just want to upscale the whole thing, that works with the same amount of quality. And speaking with Digiati, they have assured me that they're constantly in the throes of improving their software and working on it. And so if you use this and you have any issues, it's worth making contact with them, sending them the log files and the files that you've used, and that will be able to problem solve for you. But you've got to see from this video what you think are the best options for you, how you might use it, and what you can expect from this software. As all AI software unfolds for us, we are led into a really um, exciting world of being able to claim back things that we thought were lost, whether your footage is too old, old or it's too noisy or it's too out of focus or it's too far away the ai developments like with ai arty are making those problems kind of go away it feels a little bit like it's cheating but cheapers it's really helpful when you're in a pinch and you've taken that video and it's too late you can't go back so let me know what you think in the comments down below i'm sure there's going to be a bunch of comments of you um yeah thrashing around what do you think of the quality of it does it meet what you would expect it to um thanks ard for sharing this software with me giving the opportunity to test drive it and share it with my audience and until next time after you like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye he's a filthy Ooh, can't see anything. Gonna put my spectacles on so I look wiser, like I know what I'm doing, and so I can see the screen because my eyes are stuffed. Well, let's go.